The Archbishop of Philadelphia, Charles Chaput, recently attended several planning meetings at the Vatican for the planned 2015 Pontifical Council of the Family. The event, which takes place next September in Philadelphia, is a big get for the city, although as of this writing, the Pope is not committed to attend in person. Said Chaput, the Holy Father has expressed an interest in attending if he can do that, but we don't have any official decision until several months prior to the event. We're still a year away from the event, so we hope he's coming. We're planning as though he's coming, but we have to wait for the official decision to be announced before fully embracing that reality. So to recap, a group of people who spend their entire lives hoping for and planning for a visit from a man who may never actually arrive are planning for a different man who may not actually arrive to come for a visit. Ever since the spate of attacks on the Gaza Strip between Israel and Palestine, anti-Semitic violence has been on the rise in much of Europe. 75 years after the beginning of the Second World War, during which roughly 6 million Jewish people were executed, Germany is now home to some 200,000 Jews. At a recent rally in Berlin organized by the Central Council of Jews in Germany and attended by some 5,000 people, German Chancellor Angela Merkel addressed the issue as follows. It pains me when I hear that young Jewish parents ask whether they should raise their children in Germany, or elderly Jews who ask if it is right to stay. With this rally, we are making it unmistakably clear, Jewish life belongs to us, it is part of our identity and culture. Merkel continued, the legitimate criticism of political actions of a government, be it ours or the state of Israel's, is fine, but if it is used only as a cloak for one's hatred against other people, hatred for Jewish people, then it is a misuse of our basic rights of freedom and opinion and assembly. The 14th of September will forever be the wedding anniversary for 20 unique couples married in a group ceremony by Pope Francis at St. Peter's Basilica. Included in the group was a man who had previously had a wedding annulled, several who already had children together, and at least one woman who had previously given birth but was not marrying her child's father. The one thing that each of the couples shared in common is that they had all been cohabitating without the benefit of marriage, or as the church calls it, living in sin. This was the first time a sitting pontiff has officiated at a wedding since John Paul II had overseen a ceremony at the Vatican in the year 2000. While the ceremony marks a more lenient stand than that held by Francis' predecessor Benedict XVI, who hyperbolically argued that non-traditional marriage was a threat to humanity itself, it should be noted that all the couples were comprised of one man and one woman. So perhaps this can be considered a baby step by the pontiff who had once said, if a person is gay and seeks God and has good will, who am I to judge him? The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains this very well. It says that they should not be marginalized because of this orientation, but that they must be integrated into society.